On Monday, the Labour Fraternity woke up to the sad news of the passing of a uh, legendary trade unionist, Mam Emma Mashinini, at the age of 87, of suspected cardiac arrest. She's been called a pioneer until the very end. Mashinini's biggest mark was her work in the South African Commercial Catering and Allied Workers Union, Sakao, which ensured that employees worked a minimum of 40 hours a week and also got an employment insurance fund benefits. Mahmoud Fadal worked with her and he joined joins us now to talk about um, his memories, of course, of Umam Emma. Good morning to you and thank you so much for coming. Through. Yes, good morning, ma'am, and thank you very much for hosting me. Thank you so much indeed. Now, Mum Emma is someone that you've worked very closely with um, for more times as a shop steward and also to, you've also worked uh, with her uh, when she was the president of the Mediation and Conciliation Centre. Talk to us about your memories of Umam Emma. Yes. My memories of um, Mum Mashinini is one, she was a giant of a person that fought for working people's rights, that's one, especially for women's rights. Two, she has contributed in terms of improving collective bargaining in this country. So those are the fundamental issues, but especially fighting for women's rights on maternity rights and other issues. Yeah, but what would you remember most about her? The courageous, short woman that would look up and fight for people's rights. Yeah, yeah. And a very progressive person, an honest individual that had no resources but had this courage mm. to fight for people's rights in the darkest days of our lives. Yeah, yeah. It was prior to and, the election. And I would want to believe that you were still uh, in touch with Umam Emma. Uh, how did she feel about the current state of our labor fraternity in terms of the rights of the employees? Look, she always spoke, you know, we shared uh, private moments in terms of. Uh, how, how she sees the perspective, but the perspective today is different. People mm -hmm. have certain rights which they didn't have in those days. And she always, you know, looked to the issues and, and talk of the old memories, how they were organizing on food where there were no uh, resources, there were no investment companies. Yeah. And she believes that, look, there are a lot of issues people can improve uh, in the situation in terms of productivity as well as workers' rights in, uh, to, to improve and job security. So she still believes mm. that those rights are fundamental for people to find each other. Yeah, but did, did she die a happy person in terms of what she fought for? I think she, she died as a happy person because she, she was acknowledged for her contribution. And at that age, you, you live on memories, and her memories of contribution was unmeasurable. Yeah. And that is crucial for her, yeah. that it was acknowledged, her contribution, and, and, and her goals and her inspirations are still carried forward. Yeah, you were telling me off air that she actually believes that most needs to be done. Well, she believes that the situation today was much different in terms of where the economy is of the country. And she believes that if people can work uh, together in terms of improving uh, fundamentally the productivity and creating jobs yeah. as an issue. So if, we, uh, if the economy can improve, the trade unions can get stronger, which she was a trade unionist, as well as, 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 you know, as, as, as to improve the productivity so that people can participate in the economy. And she was disappointed that the economy is not moving to incorporate a lot of people. The economy is still controlled by few individuals. Mm -hmm. And that's what she was quite strong about, about. to participate in of all people. All right. Now explain to us what is relevant of her being the president of uh, the Mediation and Conciliation Center. Well, it's very interesting. We approached her with the Mediation Conciliation uh, Conciliation Agency was formed in 1990, and it had just started, and we, and we thought it was important because this was uh, going towards the, the transformation of this country, and, and they needed an agency that has the credibility both of the trade unions as well as the organization. And she joined the trade unions, and a lot of employers were honored to, to acknowledge that she was our president, despite she was a trade unionist, mm -hmm. but she had the credibility with the trade unions as well as with the employers. So the mediation agency, with her guidelines and her assistance, we resolved the first uh, big dispute was the Kruger National Park, where it's an international agency. Um, Kruger National Park is, 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 is a reserve that is known internationally. And she came across to assist, to advise how to resolve the conflict because it was owned by government as well as the private sector. So she assisted a late, a late in, the, in the mediation process. Yeah, and she was very versatile because she was also a member of uh, the Board of Corruption Watch. Absolutely. She, you know, she was a very spiritual person. So she, st she worked for a lot of churches as well. So mm -hmm. she was quite clear and very, very strong on corruption. Uh, and that, that, that was... Uh, 
an issue, it was uncompromisable on her side. Mm. Corruption was the issue that she was totally against at all costs. Yeah. Yeah, and she had an autobiography, Strikes uh, Have Followed Me All My Life. That's the title of her autobiography. It was published in 1989, but it was republished in 2012. What does it really talk about? Well, it talks of her life journey, her suffering in terms of the issues she raised, uh, issues about she talks of collective bargaining issues, yeah. where they fought for, for a penny increase. Because the, the, the in the, if you were part of the UIF, you needed to have 10 pounds and 50 pair, 51 pennies, yeah. and the employer only offered a 10 pounds and 50 pennies, and they called for a strike. But what was interesting in, in, her, in her book, and, 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 and what was crucial for me, is that I was studying at Rutgers University in America, and, and at the time when I was there, I saw the poster uh, discussion on Mrs. Machinini's book, yeah. and I was so excited to then say, can I review her book? And a book talks of a life story, and here is a woman, a person that is acknowledged, uh, was not a politician, but she had the credibility. She won the, the Lutuli Award uh, recently, or, or not recently, by President uh, Thabo Mbeki acknowledged, uh, uh, and she won the Bronze Award. So it's her oh. contribution without being a politician, yeah. uh, a real hero of our country. She was indeed an icon. So the funeral services, uh, her funeral is this coming Saturday, but memorial service tomorrow. Yes, her funeral is, is, is on Saturday in Pretoria. And the memorial service is uh, Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock in the Johannesburg City Hall. Which is tomorrow. Which is tomorrow, yes. All right. Now, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Mahmoud, thank you so much for talking to us and condolences to the family and you as well. Thank you very much thank and appreciate it. Thank well, you. there you have it. Uh, that's Mahmoud Fadal, who worked uh, very closely with Umam Emma uh, Mashinin, who died at the age of 87 of a suspected cardiac arrest. She has been called a pioneer until the very end. Well, let's take.